Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan Lad. All right, come here real quick. Come here. I can feel it. You're stressed out. You're confused. You don't know what to do. You don't know what the next steps to take to get on your first Royal Caribbean cruise. And I know you've gone down the rabbit hole of social media, YouTube, Facebook groups, and you just need somebody that's going to give you the tea. Well, in this video, we're going to give you 25 of the most crucial tips that you would need to be able to get on your Royal Caribbean cruise with ease. And guess what? It is geared towards you the first time cruiser. Let's get into it. Tip number one for the first time Royal Caribbean cruiser is put that phone in airplane mode. I, Please. I, 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 I hear y'all, but I ain't gonna be able to get on the internet. Yes, you can. Yes. Airplane mode will still allow you to tap into the ship's Wi-Fi. Being in airplane mode, you will still be able to use your Royal Caribbean app and you will still be able to do all of the other normal function of your phone like taking video, taking photography on your phone. What this is going to do is not allow you to return home and have a high freaking phone bill yeah. because your phone will try to roam the entire time you are out at sea. Unless you have one of those special packages with your, um, your phone provider that says, it is good for at sea on cruises. I don't care about international plans. International on land is different than international at sea. So make sure that you know what phone plan you have before you decide to swipe it off of airplane mode. Because when you get home, I don't want to be sitting there. <clears throat> right. Because we done had plenty of stories right here on the channel where people came back and said, I wish I had saw you guys' video about putting your phone in airplane mode before I went on my cruise and I came back with a five, six, seven hundred, some of them over a thousand dollars in Roman fees. And so make sure that you check your, your children's phone too, because sometimes yes. you can remember your phone, and but you might get, yeah. So we've had that story as well, that the kids' phones was roaming the whole time we had seen. So we don't want your freaking phone bill be the same price as the, as cruise. the cruise. Right. <laughs> I know that a whole lot of people like to use their phone when they are on a cruise ship. If you want to do that, put your phone into Wi-Fi calling. So if you buy the internet package, then you'll be able to do that. Or also, if you don't want to put your phone in Wi-Fi calling, you can use apps like TextNow. You can use WhatsApp or yep. things like that. But just make sure you keep that phone in airplane mode. Tip number two for the first time Royal Caribbean cruiser mm -hmm. is please listen at me when I tell you this. Please don't be that person to come in on the day of of your cruise. Ooh. We always recommend to come in the day before because yes. so much could happen on your way to your cruise. Mm -hmm. So last year, what happened to us, we decided to get cocky. Be telling them my business. <laughs> we got cocky and decided that since our airport is like on like 30 minutes from here, we was like, you know what, we can wait till the last minute to call <laughs> out Uber, Lyft, whatever we took. And we got to the airport and we had ended up missing our got darn flight. <sighs> because baggage claim was backed all the way up yep. at the airport. So by the time we got to our check bag, they was like, mm -mm. nope. Uh, yep, you ain't gonna be able to get on this flight. But thank God we was leaving two days before our cruise. So we was able to rebound and leave the next day. But then yeah. we had a story of another couple we met on a cruise. They had a brand new truck and they was headed in, headed into the cruise and their truck broke down. Yep. And thank God they came in a day before they was able to get the truck yep. fixed. And get back on the road. And get back on the road. So we don't want you to end up miss, messing up and missing the cruise because you came in a day before because so much can happen. You know, yep. a flight can get canceled. Like you said, your car can break down. You know, somebody, so could, somebody could get sick. It's so much can happen. So don't pay rush, Russian roulette with your cruise, man. No. Come in a day before. Because at that point, you are in full penalty. Yeah. So miss the flight. All of that money is gone. Yeah. Tip number three for the first time Royal Caribbean cruiser. Listen, I know the Royal Caribbean likes to take all your money, but this is a way that you can save on a little bit, just a little bit. You are able to bring on some beverages ah, ah, before you even get into it. Can I bring <laughs> some beer, liquor? No. no. What I'm talking about is you can bring one 750 milliliter bottle of wine per adult on board with you. And guess what? You can bring 12 cans, 12 bottles. They allow you to bring bottles, y'all. Yeah, 
other cruise lines that allow you to buy, yeah. um, bring bottles on board and or cartons of any beverage of your choosing, just as long as it is not an alcoholic based beverage. So don't come on with the wine coolers, things like that. Please don't. They We're will. talking about regular <laughs> size. I think it's like 17 ounce can bottle. Da, 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 da. Right. And also, don't forget, you can also bring champagne. And you, and if you uh, have a CPAP machine, which we're going to talk about that some more in a minute, yes. that you can walk on your, your, distilled, your distilled water. water. And if you're bringing on an infant or a child, you can also bring on <clears throat> their milk if you need to bring a milk that they drink. The fourth tip you need to know is we want to make sure that you show up at embarkation day to the ship with the proper documentation. Very important. So the first thing you would need is your set sail pass. That is your boarding pass to mm -hmm. be able to get on the ship. The second thing you want to make sure is that you have a valid passport and make sure that it is within six months from the date of the end of the cruise to make sure that you valid because if not... They will turn that away. Yes. And then also, if you don't have a passport, in which we highly recommend that you get a passport. Start working on it. Because so much can happen when you're out on international waters. Yep. And we don't want the, those kind of things to happen to you where you may get kicked off the ship or something happens. <laughs> or just get left behind. Or get left behind. Medical and, emergency. Right. And then you don't have a passport international that could be cost you tons of money to get back home. Also, you want to make sure if you don't have your passport, make sure you bring a state issue ID and a valid birth certificate. So if your birth certificate name is different than what is showing on your valid ID that you're bringing to the cruise port, you may need to. Well, I recommend that you bring the supporting documentation that bridges that gap in between your last name being Holmes and your last name now being Harris, right. because they may question Highly unlikely, but just like when you visit the DMV in your local area, take mm. everything. Right. Because what you don't want to do is for them to ask you for something and, and you, you don't, don't have, have it. it. Just bring it and just be like, hallelujah, I didn't need it. Tip number five, listen. This is a simple one. Attend the muster drill. Please. Muster is that safety briefing that's going to tell you where to meet in the case of an emergency where we have to... All men off board, we have to get back on land via the lifeboats. Go is literally five minutes, if that. Do that, get it over with, boom. Then you can enjoy the rest of your cruise. Exactly. And the information of the location will be on your boarding pass, which is your set sail pass. So you'll be able to see exactly where your boarding, um, your muster station is. Tip number six for the first time Royal Caribbean Cruiser. Now, these items right here, you do not want to forget. And the first one is going to be your tumbler, because that's going to be good to keep your drinks cold longer while you're on the cruise. So if you want to get some water or you want to go to the bar and get a drink and mm. dump, your, uh, drink, dump your drink inside your tumbler, which we do all the time, yes. because nobody likes a watered down drink. Uh, the next nope. thing you don't want to forget is your uh, reusable straw. Let me tell you, that comes in so handy. We got these ones called the telescope straws. Telescopic. Telescopic straws, which we have them oh, over yeah. in our Cruise Essential store on our website, which we will link that below if you want to pick one of those up. Also, we have tumblers linked over there as well. Yeah, as well. And then the next thing you don't want to forget is, when you, uh, is your lanyard. Oh. Yes. That's going to hold your uh, CPAS card. So <laughs> Royal Caribbean, yeah. So Royal Caribbean don't punch holes in their CPAS cards. So we like to tell take the sleeves, yeah, like that. Because if not, you will have to go down to guest service and get them to punch you for you, or they might have a station a so you can that you can punch it yourself. The seventh tip: online check in. Ah, listen, just listen. I got you. I got you. Online check-in is going to do a few things. So a lot of you all always ask this question, when do I get my boarding pass, your set sail pass? When do I get my luggage tags to put on my luggage? This is where this takes place. This takes place at 45 days before you're sailing. I honestly believe that it was at 30 days at my on my last um, cruise with Rural, but just keep that in the back of your mind. <laughs> the website says 45. We're going to go with 45. Right. But 45 days prior to your sailing, you will get an email from Royal Caribbean saying, hey, it's time to do your online check-in. What that's going to do is you're going to be able to select what time you want to arrive to the ship and do the boarding process. You'll also be able to put... um. 
You will also be able to set up your onboard spending account. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? When you get on a cruise, cruise spending is a cashless system, which pretty much means there's a card that's given to you. It will be at your door once you get on the cruise and get to your cabin. And that is your everything card. It is your room key and it's also your spending card. You have to guarantee that spending card with something. We recommend using a credit card yes. because a credit card is just an, an open line of credit. We don't recommend doing a debit card because guess what? Now you're messing around with your real-time funds, and I'm going to get into why that can be dangerous in a few minutes. You also can guarantee it with cash. Most people mm -hmm. like, well, when can I do cash? I want you to think about what you just asked me. <laughs> you can only deposit cash in person, so yeah. it's going to have to be on, on the, the day of you getting on board. You can yep. either do that at guest services or sometimes they actually have a desk before you actually get on yeah. the ship mm -hmm. and you can go over there and tell them that you want to deposit your cash as well. Some ships have machines where you can do it as well. And all you have to do is scan your set sail pass and deposit your cash and that will be on your set sail pass for you to spend for the duration of your cruise. A lot of questions that I get is, does everybody in my cabin have access to the funds or to the credit card to make purchases on my card? No, but you can set it up that way. Right. For instance, my husband and I, I we just do our purchases on, on the, one card. Right. And what I do is I click a button and I attest that I am going to be guaranteeing the purchases for Stanley. If you don't want to do that, then the people that's in the cabin with you will have to do their own. Everybody on the cruise gets a C pass card. I had to think. I do a lot of cruise lines, so I have to keep, yeah, uh -huh. keep the terminology straight. So everyone gets a C pass <clears throat> card on the cruise. You just have to figure out which way you want to guarantee it. You going to guarantee it for everybody in the cabin, or let everybody set up their own individual spending accounts? If you ain't a husband and wife, I suggest the latter. <laughs> right. <laughs> We get this question a lot too. A lot of people ask, do my kids need their own um, C-Pass and their own account set up for spending? You can. You can, but they <clears throat> will get a card regardless. Yeah, they will get a card. Yeah, but yeah. you can. And with a kid, the good thing about it is you can allocate. Yes. So if you say, hey, your limit is $20 a day, buddy, mm -hmm. then it's $20. Then you cut off. And then the next day, if they acted up in the kids' camp, you can say zero. <laughs> you yeah. get nothing today. Cause we know, we know them kids will burn a hole in that credit card. And they'll be looking at you like you ain't just spend four thousand dollars <laughs> right. to bring them on a cruise ship. And if you're doing the online check-in for everybody in your cabin, just because you know all of their information, you can do that. But just right. know you have to know all of their information yes. in order to do it. There are some screens that you can trick out by just putting zeros or whatever. But just know when you get to the port, you're going to have to kind of rectify that, if that makes sense. All right. Circling back to what I said when I said I was going to talk about the debit card and why I don't recommend you adding it to guarantee your onboard spending when it comes to your CPAS card. I'm going to get these, start, these terms right in a minute. It's because with your debit card, what's going to happen is, one, and this happens on your credit card too, but most people don't see it. Right. It's on day one before you even get on the cruise, there is a hold that is assessed on that card, which is going to say, da -da -da -da. okay, the card is good. It's $99.75. I promise you, on my last cruise, I think it was 100 They round it up. Yeah. It's fine. Put that extra 25 cent in they there. They put that 25 cent on it. <laughs> so what happens is when you're using a debit card, you're using and holding up your true funds. Right. Not your line of credit as you would on a credit card. These are your true funds. So what <laughs> is also happening is $99.75 is held. It's not usable fa um, cash anymore. So then if you go on board and the first day you partying and you spend $100 in drinks, now you have $199.75 of unavailable cash. Yep. And that hold is going to pretty much be there until the duration of your cruise. Guess what? The next day you get go a little ham a little bit more. And then the cruise line was like, oh, they're spending no change a little bit. Let me guarantee, you know, put another hold on there to see if they have enough money in here to right. guarantee the purchases that they're about to do now. So now you're you're just stacking holds on top of purchases, and a lot of people have come off of the trip and be like, I have like five hundred, six hundred dollars in holds. Some right. has been as little as a hundred, right? But 
that's unusable cash. And if you don't have a, a buttload of money in your account, that can get you into trouble. Stuff can start bouncing around right. and all of that. And we don't want that. Uh, true story. Um, in our comments, somebody said they went on a cruise <laughs> And when they got off their cruise, they had seven hundred plus dollars on hold for nine days, and they said they were so stressed out. And I was like, I totally understand. Yeah. But another way you can avoid those holes being in your your main checking account is that you can get a prepaid uh, Visa or Mastercard, which the holes will still be on those, but at least the money won't be held up inside of your bank account. Um, so you can do any prepaid card with yeah. a Visa, a logo, Visa, a Master logo. So they can be a Cash App card, PayPal card, mm -hmm. Apple um, um, card, any of them ones. As yeah. long as they have Rush a card yeah, for us, I all can't. of them. As long as they have a <laughs> Visa or Master logo, you can attach those to your uh, C Pass card. And to add on to that, because I can feel it. Yeah. <laughs> you can also do gift cards as well. And yes. what's going to happen is that money is going to pull from. On board credit first, then it's going to go down to gift card, and then it's going to go to every other means of guarantee that's on there. All right. Tip number eight for the first time, Royal Caribbean Cruiser. And this mm -hmm. leads us right from the same uh, concept back from check-in is do not yeah. use your debit card in port. And a lot of people are like, why? Why can't I use my debit card? Because you open yourself up for fraud. They over in the Caribbean, not everybody don't play fair. No, they don't. Like, they, everybody is trying to make a living, and some people make a living by scamming. So, please use a credit card or use cash. Or use cash. So, every time we import, we always use credit card or cash. We never, ever use our debit card because we don't want to come back. And then, and then when there's international charges, it's a whole lot harder to, to dispute charges it on is. a debit card because the banks automatically think that you're lying. Like, yeah, you went over to the Bahamas they and you bought all, all them money. drinks and all them souvenirs and now you come back and trying to dispute it. <laughs> so you're going to have to prove that you didn't do those charges. So yeah, it's, it can be it's a whole lot easier to do the credit card or cash, man. Yeah. Save yourself from all that trouble, fam. Yeah, and also when you're in port, be mindful that not every place <clears throat> takes American Express. So right. if that's your yes. main card, yes. I will bring a backup card as well because they don't want to pay the American Express no fees. fees. We don't want to pay the American <laughs> Express fees. <laughs> business owner here. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> Tip number nine for the first time Royal Caribbean Cruise it is, and this can work for being on board, but this is especially, especially important when you're in port. Import means Destinations, Bahamas, um, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Jamaica, Grand Turk. That's what <clears throat> import means. So when you're in these ports of call, I'm going to tell you what they do sometimes. Uh -huh. Run it. If you have say, hey, that's a $2 souvenir. I would love to have it. I only have a 20. They're going to swear to God they don't have cash to give you. They don't you. have no change. Yeah. They're not going to have no cash to give you back your change. Yeah. So what happens <laughs> is... They'll either upcharge you up until you make it to that $20 or up until where they mysteriously can break it and give you like a couple of dollars back. We don't want that. So just nah. keep your bills as small as you can possibly get them so that when you go somewhere and you're only making a $2 purchase, a $5 is not going to take you up to a $20 purchase because right. they told you. That they yeah, had no, no change. No change. <laughs> and then also, small bills are good for tipping. It is very yes. customary to tip while you're in these different ports of calls. So that's a good way to go ahead and just give people a few dollars at a time. And not only tip at the ports of call, but also, also tip on the, on the ship. ship. So when the workers are going above and beyond for you and taking care of but shout well, yeah, right here, shouts out to all of the cruise workers. You guys yes. work very hard. So look out for them, man. Make sure yes. you, if they're doing a good job, make sure they're room stewardess. Make sure you tip them. Uh, if you're at the bar and they hooking you up with drinks and, yep, and keep things on. Your staff. Yeah, your dining. Hook them up, man. Please they hook them up. good care of you. Yes, hook them up. All right, the tip tip that you need to know, and this is for you individuals that, hey, you looking to book your Royal Caribbean and you checking the price and you just blown away, be like, why it costs so much? <laughs> yes, uh, it do. <laughs> so how you can actually save a little bit is actually booking your Royal Caribbean cruise about six to 12 months in advance or longer. Mm -hmm. You will get a much cheaper price. I'm not going to say cheap price. 
yeah. cheap. The deals are usually better. Yeah, cheaper price than waiting a few months before because what you're gonna find out as you get closer to sailing, prices of cruises always go up. Yep. The eleventh tip is once your entertainment becomes available for you to be able to book it before you get on board, go ahead and do that. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes there is a magic date that they say, ooh, you can, you know, book the skating, you know, the ice skating show or Quest or the comedy shows and you go out there and you just can't do it. I'm going to be honest. That is an issue that Royal Caribbean does have, but it is a feature in the app that at a certain point, you'll be able to see the entertainment that's going to be on board for your sailing, and then you can just reserve those. I recommend doing that because once you get on board, if you don't have anything reserved, then you have to go and stand in the standby line. Yes. Now, you probably will always be able to get in. You're going to have to wait until the flow of people that have actually reserved it goes in first. So just go ahead and get it out the way. And do it early because the good stuff gets booked up fast. Yeah. If you're getting any value out of these tips, please smash that like button so the algorithm can send this video to other first-time cruisers like you so they can get help as well. And that leads us to number 12. And listen to me good with this one. <laughs> is go to the shows early because one thing about World Caribbean shows, I'm going to say it. They, they have, have the, best. the best shows hands down Agreed. at sea. That we have experienced. And now if, if you are, if you've been on Royal Caribbean, if you agree with us, please put that down in the comments if you agree with us about those shows. You want to show up early. And if you've Nothing. been on the icon of the seas, yeah. and you've seen the Wizard of Oz. Oh man. <laughs> Tell you, you want to show up because those venues fill up Bad. fast. So you want to try to show up 30. 45 minutes earlier. I say 30 is a good spot. I think 30 is a good mm -hmm. spot. So that way you can guarantee that you can at least get a decent seat. You might not get a good seat because people rush in. So please show up to the shows early. Yep. Tip number 13 for the first time Royal Caribbean Cruiser is use a travel agent. Listen, I know there has been so many um, things out there where travel agents aren't good. Da, 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 da. Find you a good one. Yes. And the reason that I say this is because going at something like this is hard. Going at something like this alone can lead you to a lot of mistakes that can cost you a lot of freaking money. And time. And you may not be a first-time cruiser, but you may be a first-time cruiser to this particular line. A travel agent is going to be that person that's going to keep you all the way informed. They're going to teach you along the way. They're going to make sure that you hit your target um, cutoff dates. They're going to make sure that, hey, when, you're when it's open for you to be able to book the shows. They're going to let you know that when it's going to be the time for you to finally make your final decisions on what purchases you're going to make. They're going to be able to tell you that when it's time to check in, they're going to be able to tell you that that way you don't have to be on social media on YouTube. Hey, I'm happy to have you. <laughs> I'm happy to have you over here on the channel, but <clears throat> then you don't have to look at a YouTube video to learn the things that you need to learn for your cruise because you have hired an expert that's going to be able to teach you all of that and to get you on your way seamlessly and with ease. Shameless plug, I am a travel agent, but you don't have to use me. Use anybody. anybody. Yes. Use anybody that's an expert in that field. Tip number 14. Now, this one, listen to me. If you know that you are prone to seasickness, please bring your seasickness medicine. That is Dramamine or C-Bands. Or, or the patch. Yeah. A bonnie. Is it bonnie? Bonang? Whatever. Y'all yeah. know. Or if you have vertigo issues, you definitely want to make sure that you bring that. And then... Uh, this, this wasn't on the notes, but you <laughs> want to make sure if you have vertigo and either help with, with motion sicknesses, make sure that you get in the middle of the ship. Don't get in the front or the back. What do you mean by the middle of the ship? We talking about your your your, your cabin. Because we, we don't want y'all just standing in the middle of the ship. So Stella told me to yeah, get in the middle. Yeah, my bad. I mean, yeah. <laughs> cabin. <laughs> Your cabin sure in the you, middle of the ship. Yes. Make yeah, sure you're so, booking cabins in the midship. And the, like, how we like to use it is the ship goes like this, and you notice the middle stays stabilized. So that's how you can minimize your motion sickness. So yeah, sea bands, drama mean, in the middle of the ship, and you should be fine. And even if you don't have <laughs> issues with vertigo or motion sickness, because you don't know until you get on board, prepare for it as well. Yeah, please do it, because we had family members... 
<laughs> oh God, that didn't listen to us. They never and, do. And and went on board. Didn't put the C bands on. Got seasick. And I'm telling you, you get seasick. That is the worst feeling ever. It's gonna take you down today. Yes. And 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 when it happens, it's too late. Mm-hmm. You can't put the C bands on, take the drama, and then you gotta ride that gotta sucker ride out. out. So yeah, please don't be like our family member. And then one time they went back again, you, had the C bands it's on. Okay, it's okay. And then took the C bands off the last day and got seasick. Talking about something. Well, I felt like I was doing I thought all right. I was good. No, if you know you pro to it, keep them on. Tip number 15. Make sure that you know where you're booking your cabin at. Please. There is nothing worse than to hear somebody say, I didn't get no sleep all night. The club, I can hear the club and I can hear the Lido deck. Well, where were you positioned? Yeah. Listen, first time cruiser mistakes. You just book a cabin. You never look at the ship map. You never see what's above you, what's below you. Because if you are a person and you've booked under a public area, team sleep, no. None. You're not going to get no sleep. <laughs> um, if you're under the dining room, you're going to hear tables and all kinds of stuff Glasses. all morning, all night long. So make sure you know where you're booking that cabin just so that you can get a good night's sleep. And also, I will tell you, Royal Caribbean has the reputation of this. And this is the reason I say not to do this. Do not book guaranteed cabins. No. I'm not saying that because, oh, I want you to spend more money. I'm telling you this because just go, just go look on the websites. You can find this information. Royal Caribbean is notorious for overselling their ships. And guess who's going to be the first people that's going to get that call to say, yeah, we kind of ran into a problem and... There's not going to be a cabin that we can assign you because we're kind of overbooked. Mm. It's kind of like the airlines. The people that don't have anything that says, hey, I'm in room 9191, then you're going to be the first that's going to be asked, or not asked, told yeah. that you're not going to be able to board because they don't have room for you. Then suddenly that ex- all that excitement you have building up to the cruise turns into anger. And then also with the guarantee rooms, if you do get one, you don't know where it's at. They're going to end up just throwing you anywhere. And they could throw you in them areas where it's real loud, under the club, the dining room, just like we spoke. Yeah. So, or it could be beautiful. It could be so, the best cabin ever, but you don't so, have any control over that. So don't be deceived by the cheaper price. Yes. You, you, it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where you're going to land. Tip number 16, and I'm not being judgmental because I've been so guilty of this. Download the Royal Caribbean's app now. <laughs> Do it now. Don't wait because it is so easy to forget. Mm-hmm. Um, because once you get on the ship, and if you have not bought the Wi-Fi package, it is hard as heck to get to those get apps it. on your phone. It's 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 a nightmare. So it's mm-hmm. much easier to do it before. And also, I like that you can log into Royal Caribbean's app and start getting familiar with it. So like, mm-hmm. if you've been on like, especially like you've been on Carnival and or or, or oh, version. NCL version, theirs is totally different. So there is a learning curve. It took me a while. I, I was so confused. I was like, uh, yeah, because there's a scroll yeah, and then like, there's a bottom <laughs> bar. So you can do this or you can do that. Like I was so confused, but now I got it down pat. And it's so, a beautiful app. Yeah, the app is the app. Once you get it down, you be like, this is so dope. Mm-hmm. This is so dope because you can do so much on the app. You can. So yeah, play around with it before you get on a cruise. Tip number 17. On day one, once you get on the ship, explore that ship. Yes. Like get familiar where the venues are from. And especially if you're on deck such and such in your room, get to know like the ways to get to where you want to get to quicker so that you don't have all of those. Yeah. Where that's at? What is that? Yeah. Where, where, uh, now for me, the first things I want to locate is where the food at. That's me. Where the drinks at and where the bathrooms at. <laughs> <laughs> Cause in one, water. Yes, because one of the things when you've been drinking, even if it's not alcohol, soda water, alcohol, Anything. and you got to pee. That's the worst feeling. And you ever. don't know where the bathroom is at, man. I'm, I am almost went there on myself. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> almost. Sometimes I got there at the last second. If anybody in the car in the, uh, just listened to that, you guilty that, that you got to the bathroom at the last second because you didn't know where the bathroom was at. 
You talk to the employees and you'd be like, where the bathroom at? Where the bathroom at? They say, it's right there, You son. just take it off running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get to know that shit. Yeah, ship. get to know Get the to ship. know that, those venues. Yes. All right, tip number 18 for the first time Royal Caribbean Cruiser. Every time we give this tip, this tip really blesses people is join the Facebook group for your sailor. Mm -hmm. Here's why. Oh, well, first, before I tell you why, how, how you do that <laughs> is uh, you will go on Facebook. So let's say, for instance, you're on an icon. you want on an icon for June of 2025. You just go on icon June 25. And if somebody's created a Facebook page for that, it's going to pop up. Join that Facebook page. Well, it'll be June 18th. So just don't do June 2025 because yeah, you'll yeah. get a 1,000 groups. But be specific about your date. Right. And so the reason why you want to do that, because you can meet some fabulous people. So that mm -hmm. way, by the time you get on board, you've made some friends. Mm -hmm. Y'all can hook up and go get drinks. Y'all can hook up and go to the club. That part. Hook up uh, at Sail Away. Y'all can do gifts exchange. Uh, some people have done that and actually found new cruising buddies. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, and then especially if you if you're traveling solo, this is a perfect opportunity to surround yourself with some people because I know sometimes if that's what you want. Yeah, you, you you traveling by yourself sometimes you might not feel good and you know a little afraid. So you can have some people around you. So yeah, join that Facebook group and I'm telling you, you will not regret it. Yeah, I love when they do like the bar <clears throat> when they playing bar bar crawls, yeah, slot pools, gift exchange. We've did a gift exchange before yeah. and it was so fun. Yeah, it was so fun. Yeah. Tip number nineteen. So with Royal Caribbean. Just like any other cruise line, you can say, hey, I want to do this specialty dining, da-da-da-da-da. Go ahead and pre-purchase that. Get it out the way. Don't worry about it. They also have an unlimited dining plan that you can purchase as well. So look into that if that's your thing. Also, their drink plan. So you can have one that's just strictly for sodas. You can have one that's a little bit more elevated so that you can get like the juices, the mocktails, the the milkshakes and things like that. Then you right. have the one that you do everything, alcohol, all of that. So just make sure that you know what package that you want to get. Purchase those beforehand. And then also your excursions. If the good excursions go fast, and then I need you to start thinking about things that you don't think are excursions, but they're listed as excursions. Keep in mind, like Hideaway Beach, which is the- Highly recommended. Highly recommended. Yeah. But go ahead and book that. <clears throat> And the one thing that I will say about Royal Caribbean, they have dynamic pricing. So what mean what that means is the price today may not be the price tomorrow. Right. So the good thing about theirs is if you see the price drop, you can just literally go and log into your account. It's easier to do it on a computer, cancel it, rebook it at the lower price. You can do that all the way up until 48 hours prior to sailing. After 48 hours, you cannot pre-purchase anything. You locked in. You are locked in. You yeah. can't make any changes. And the reason for that is now they have to call what they call a manifest. They have to manifest that ship. And everything that you did now has to be transferred on board. So 48 hours, you can play around with that thing all you want to. Well, before 48 hours. Yeah. All right. Tip number 20, which leads into when you pre-bind everything, when it comes down to their cruise beverage package, Make sure you know the rules. Yes. So we're going to put up on the screens. This is their beverage packages. It breaks down everything. I'm not going to call out everything on here, but you can see on each of the tiers what is what you can actually have, what's included, what's not included. Mm -hmm. So you can choose wisely the best one that will fit you for your cruise. Now, this is one of the things that I learned that was unique with Royal Caribbean is most other cruise lines, if one person in the cabin buys the alcohol package everyone has everybody to, yeah. in the cabin over 21 has to with royal caribbean they will allow you for one person to do the ultimate package which has all of the alcohol and all of that in it and the other person to do the deluxe package so they won't just say one person just do that and you don't get anything so if that person does the alcohol package with all of that you do have to by the deluxe package, which saves a whole lot of money if someone in the cabin drinks and the other doesn't. Right. And I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Tip number 21. Yeah, man. <sighs> woosa, woosa. Because <laughs> I know the this is the one that gets all the questions, so it might be a little lengthy because I want you to get it. And when I say this, don't think about a flight. Don't think about air. Don't think about none of that. Bring a carry-on bag. Ah, yeah. What I tell you, don't think about a flight. 
the rules are totally different. And what we need a carry-on bag for on a cruise ship is simply what it's what it sounds like. We need you to carry on certain things when it comes mm-hmm. to a cruise. You can't put it in your check bag. Please because don't. Because it will, they will take it, it will go bye-bye. So you're, if you're gonna bring on sodas, bottles, um, your wine, your champagne, all of that has to be brought on with you because it has to be inspected. So you get me? You 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 following me? Also, your documentation. You don't want to have your um your passport, your birth certificate, your license, all of that in your check luggage. Mm. So putting all of those things in your carry-on is essential. And some people be like, I'm just going to carry it in my arms. I've seen that before. It looks ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't care what the bag is. It could be a tote. It could be a never full. It could a, a be a backpack. It could be yeah. a trash bag, far as I care. Just use something. Doesn't ha- doesn't matter the size. Just make sure that you have something to bring your things on board. I recommend also throwing a phone charger in there. Yes. Because your rooms will be ready, what, at 1.30? Between 1 and 2. 1 and 2 uh-huh. on Royal Caribbean. So if you're... Embarking on a ship at 10 or 11 o'clock and you're taking pictures and you're recording the sail away, your phone's probably dead by the time. So right. get you a charger. I like the the um, travel chargers where you can just put it on the back or where you can charge it wirelessly. Do that. But yes, those are the essential things. And then also in your carry on, if you're a person who like to swim as soon as you get on board, you know, pack your swimming trunks for the fellas. And pack your baby suit for the ladies. That's it. And yeah. also your CPAP. I almost forgot yeah. about that one. Yeah. You have to walk that on because that is a medical device. So they want to see it. And if you bring the distilled water for that, you can have to bring that on as well. Putting that in a bag and a carry-on, doesn't matter if it's a roller bag, like we said, makes life so much easier. Right. And please don't make the mistake of sending it, sending your alcohol, you bring in wine and your champagne because they will confiscate it. Yes. And they will not give it back to you. Nope. Tip number 22 for the first time, Royal Caribbean Cruiser. Now, this one right here becomes controversial as well. Yes, it does. And we highly recommend it going back to what I said earlier, taking care of the crew that's going to take care of you. Yes. Is prepay your gratuities, man. Mm -hmm. Yes, prepay the gratuities because if you don't, Royal Caribbean will charge you your gratuities per day. And that amount is, and I'm going to look down because I don't want to mess the amount up, which is going to be $20.50 per person for suites and $18 per person for any other cabin. Where else do gratuities apply? When you go to the bar and you get a drink. Now, this don't count for prepaid gratuities. Prepaid gratuities only takes care of the crew. Um, That's your room stewardess. That's the people that work room steward, people in the dining room, the people that's behind the scenes that you don't see. Um, that's washing all the dishes and all right. that kind of stuff. Um, those people get the prepaid gratuities. Now, there is another gratuity, which is 18% at the bars. Now, when you go and get a drink at the bar, they're going to add that 18% into the price of the drink. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be a line there where you can add extra. Now, if you don't want to give them no extra, don't put it on there. But want to make you aware that the tip is already in there. the price of the drink. Also, there's another 20% gratuity. <laughs> Take my yeah, money. So if you decide to pre-buy anything else on board, like the spa, um, the salon, things like that, they will charge you 20% for that. And that has nothing, the 18% and the 20% has nothing to do with prepaid gratuity. Those are just extra. Yes. So please prepay the gratuities. And then you'll be like, well, what if I don't want to pay the gratuities? Well, you can mm-hmm. actually go down to their guest services and mm-hmm. have them removed, which we highly Ask you not do it because of what I just said. Do you want to be that guy? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they'll they'll be glad to take them off for you if you don't want to uh, pay those. Yes, and also when you do a drink <clears throat> package of any kind, when you pre-purchase those, that eighteen percent gratuity is automatically added into the yes. price at checkout. So yes. trust me, they're gonna get their money. Oh yeah, they're gonna get that money. They're gonna get their money. Tip number twenty three for the first time, Royal Caribbean cruiser. Listen, if you ain't heard nothing else that I have said. Listen to me good. As a travel agent, I get this quite often. And the one thing that I tell people, not just for Royal Caribbean, but all cruise lines, cruise lines have really buckled down on people making changes to their booking. What I mean by that is, for instance, I'm an avid traveler. Maybe someone that I want to encourage to go on a trip with me isn't so sure. What's starting to happen now is as soon as you call in, be like, hey, 
I might need to do this. I might do need to do that. You open yourself up for charges and they have been about a hundred dollars um, for the change on these bookings. Ooh. Let me go ahead and give you an example. If you said, hey, me and him booked a cruise on April the 3rd, and then we later on see something else that we want, Royal Caribbean is like, okay, we'll let you do it, but it'll be $100 per person in that room as a change penalty. So Ooh. not only are we having to change the cat, um, to change the sailing, we have to come up with $200 before they would even do it. So be very careful and be pretty much be pretty sure what it is that you want to do yes. because every change is going to cost you some money. And guess what? Royal Caribbean is for the families. So guess what? If you have four people in a room and they want to change their Ooh, sailing date, yeah. you have to come up with $400 before they will even change their mm. sailing for you. Think about that. Tip number 24. Now, this one should be obvious, but some people still kind of struggle with this, is make sure that you pack enough clothes. And what we mean by that is sometimes people don't pay attention to the number of days they're going to be at sea. Oh, yeah. And they just will just start packing like they go into a resort <laughs> or a hotel. No, you want to count the number of days that you are going to be yep. sailing. And all depends and on what yeah, all depends on what type of person you are. Um, what we do is how many times do I want to change per day? So if there is a five day cruise, how many times you want to change? So you want to change twice, you want to have 10 outfits. You want to change three times, that's 15 outfits. So you get the drift. So make sure that you keep that in mind. Also, don't forget to check out the theme nights for your sailing. But it'll be on your app. Yeah, it'll be on your app, the different uh, theme nights. So if you want to participate on the theme nights, I know they have like like white nights, black and white nights. They have red nights, red nights and stuff like that. <clears throat> tropical. Right. So if you want to participate in any of th those things, make sure you don't forget to pack those items as well. That part. Tip number 25, and this is especially important for first time cruisers because you're having so much fun on off in these islands and whatnot, and then you start to lose a track of time, and make sure you're staying on ship time. Yes. And not island time. Yes. You'll learn what that is, and, if you, and not, not with me. Look, Google it. But get back to the ship with a little bit more than an hour to spare. We, we say one hour, but honestly, I would say like an hour and 25 minutes to spare. Yes. That way you're not rushing. Anything could happen. If you're in a cab, what if that cab gets into some gridlock? And yeah. then they're not able to get you to the port in time. You don't want to be left behind in an island. I mean, maybe you do. You might. If, yeah. you, have, if you have a passport, right? it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, we hear plenty of people like to get left in Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, get back ahead of schedule so that you're not rushing. And then also, to avoid the long line of people that decided to wait till the last minute to get back on the ship as well. Right. Because that line don't be playing. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this video on the screen right here. 10 mistakes you want to avoid on your first Royal Caribbean cruise. And we're going to catch you in the next video. Peace.